So I'm going to be talking about the Monero, the Monero country this time. And my hope, uh, spoiler alert, probably you, we, I will end up the talk with more questions than answers. But my hope is that this talk is like all those things that we do, especially in the Monero community, that we don't know who is going to reach them, but we just put it out there by chance, just like well, when we play pool, we aim for some specific hole, but we never actually made it. But if we do it hard enough, maybe we sometimes we hit the right spot and we make it like it was orientation all along. But so hopefully this talk is like this and any of you or some of you get inspired by some of the questions and can think of some of the answers. So basically, uh, what I see all of the time in the Monero community is a lot of talk and progress and work towards opting out. We, some of you even have like an opt out t-shirt uh, over there. <laughs> uh, I have one as well. And it's all well and good. It makes sense to try to opt out of a system like the system we have today everywhere in the world. It look, kind of looks like a, yeah, like a super high walled citadel with uh, CCTV cameras and basically all the people looks like NPCs doing like this and not complaining much about how the, the life is nowadays. Um, but I totally get and I think everybody here will get why it makes sense to try to opt out. My question with this talk is, okay, that's all fine and good, but where are we going to opt out to? And I see way less uh, maybe maybe there are some discussions about well, less proposals about where are we opting out to. And if we opt out and we are successful and opting out and we build something on the other side of that citadel, how is it going to look like, right? Because there are many choices. How is it going to look like a hippie commune? We are all like sharing everything. More like Burning Man, it's like a chaos and we do stuff, party all night long. It's like a hyperdense, go long city, cypherpunk something, or we are just like, at least I think many people like try to imply super free because we live by ourselves in the middle of nowhere and have rifles and I prepare for the apocalypse, which may never come. But in the meantime, we're having a lousy quality of life, I think. And I don't want to start learning how to I don't know, plant my own potatoes or something. So I think we can do better. Maybe I'm naive. I'm totally naive. Uh, I, try. I think that it's better to be positive uh, than negative. Eventually, the negative people were right. But without the positive people, we never do anything anyway. So for that, we're going to need both of these guys. We have a lot of the disruptors here. Maybe Monero is a bit special because we have many of the constructors as well, but usually the disruptors are the ones that get most of the press. They are way cooler. It's, it looks way nicer to just break things and to, it's more badass to say, oh, I got out of the system or whatever. And it's kind of boring and a bit lame to say, oh, I had this idea to build something. But we need both of them for our Monero country to exist. These are the two assumptions that will be using for the rest of what I'm proposing. Uh, I need, we need both of these things for it to succeed. I mean, we need to accept that most people are good. I will put an asterisk on that and say, okay, under the right circumstances, but most people are good and that we tend to make groups all the time. So some people find me on this, especially on the second one, believe it or not. It's like, no, no we can all be by ourselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, good, good luck. It's not going to happen. Uh, on the first one, on the on the that most people are good, we have many, many examples of like cheap and easy like tests that you can do when you leave a wallet in the, on the floor and you leave the contact information of the owner. Believe it or not, most people, even if there's money in there, return the wallet, right? And they didn't have to. So there have been many experiments like that. It's been proven once and again and again that is, if we if we have enough to eat, we are generous and we return the items that don't belong to us. But I'm more interested on these kind of experiments, like the ultimatum game, probably some of you know, know it, because it's on the fringes of 
the incentives of people behaving properly in a cooperative or in an aggressive way that we find some ideas for our monero country and the laws that we will need to develop for that country to work in a nice way right in the in this in this experiment for example you have two participants a and b you give money an amount of money to a and you say okay propose a split of this money to b if b takes it they thinks it's fair they both get the share if b rejects nobody gets the money right so of course, the solution to that problem is never 50-50. A tries to get as much money of the trade as possible without insulting B. In societies right now, in the city that I was talking about, I see this kind of trials all the time, right? And they keep pushing, pushing, pushing. A keeps pushing, pushing the barrier so much until B says, oh, fuck you, right? You're not getting anything. Not me, not you, not anything, and they stop cooperating. So this kind of simple exercises i think we have to keep in mind all the time when we are designing rules of interaction between what will be the citizens of a monero country we are super used to being very adversarial when we design like crypto systems because we cannot allow for any participant or any like a risk of losing funds because we lose something and we all breaks down societies has a bit more of leeway so i think we can learn while riding the bike, so to speak. Uh, when it comes to grouping, of course, being in groups, super easy, makes us safer. The thing that people like once the most is to feel, to feel safe, at least to feel safe. We are safer in groups, especially if we are the group that is bigger than the other group, so we can kill the other group, basically. That's the way that it works. But it's also because it's nicer. We are social creatures, we like to be each other's. We make conference just for that reason. We could have been like talking online. Anyways, no, we make a conference, we fly to Prague. We are gonna make groups. So there is a number, the number number, that has been proven with many many with, with many many points of data. That is around 150 citizens. I mean 150 people, when you go over that threshold, basically trust breaks because that's like the biological limit of how many connections between people we can keep in our brains at the same time, right? We can claim to know 150 people about and the relationship between them. So trust systems work up to that threshold. And after that, we kind of need to develop systems, rules, and, in, and institutions so that we don't basically kill each other and rob robots all the time. So I think if you pay attention, like Monerocon is roughly in that number, and we leave backpacks laying around. It's all good and, and fine. Uh, I think Monero as a whole, the community, is kind of in that threshold as well. Of course, we are like thousands of us, but you start to see the cracks around if we don't develop strong, strong um, rules of engagement, right? This is the beginning of a to-do list. Of course, it will take like weeks to do something like that. But let's let's say let's play let's play for a minute that or for 11 minutes that we are going to actually decide it's a good idea, let's try to make a country, right? First, we need to decide who, who gets to be a Monero citizen. Uh, to, in my opinion, yes, you can be a Monero And you can too, and you can too, yes. I think having Monero is not enough, because you could very well have a Monero. The whole point to have Monero is that it's permissionless, so even people against Monero can hold Monero. So holding Monero is not enough as a condition to be a Monero citizen. I think the way that the world works, works right now, I mean, you're basically a citizen of somewhere because you were born in that particular, particular uh, region or uh, physical location, or you came out of the right mother, so to speak, one of two of them, or a combination of both. Uh, we don't have that privilege to like, start, starting now to claim who, is, who gets to be a Monero citizen. So we are going to opt in being a Monero citizen, right? And we need something in common. We, uh, we don't have religion in common. We don't have a physical space in common. So the things that we have in common is basically our ideas or our beliefs, our core beliefs. To me, these are the three that I could think of that I don't, I don't think they are like really contested in the Monero community. We all kind of agree that these three are important. Freedom to basically, the freedom, what I mean by freedom is that you, you are, uh, your ability to choose uh, the design of the life that is going to make you happier. 
the privacy to me is a total requisite so you can exercise that freedom without, without not even like punishment, but also judgment so you don't modify your behavior yourself. My previous talk was more about that. And decentralization, of course, so nobody's in charge and can change the other two rules at will. So to me, I'm a citizen. And of course, there are many other things around those core beliefs. Maybe some that they are still not like total consensus now, but we need people to write about them, to think about it, to speak about them, and see what happens. Because I'm sure that we can get, we can get more than those three. The more that we get, the stronger that we are going to be. The second decision is that do we need land or not? It's a country. Let's play with me a little bit. Um, of course, we are kind of like a micronation, right? At this stage, uh, we see we know many micronations in this micronations in this in the history. There is sea land, which is an offshore platform. If nobody knows this. Is a liver land, which is a no man's land next to Croatia. Molossia is a ranch in the US and many, many. It's super fun to, to learn about micronations. But the thing that they have in common is that basically nobody takes them for, for serious, right? Uh, it's like, uh, let's pretend, yeah, we are a, a nation. Sure, sure. Go you and your nation. And I think that if we want to ensure, let's play it like, let's play this game, but seriously, we want people to have a better life inside the Monero country that they have outside of it. So, Let's try to get recognized by the other states and other nations. And to do that, uh, they have to pay attention to us, right? So I say no to land. I say no to land, at least not at this stage, because we are centralizing again. We have just one attack vector. We are never going to agree on which is the best plan, best land to be in. I don't like cold. Some people like cold, for example, right? I like to have dinner at 10 p.m. We are never going to agree. So. Let's forget about land, right? But there are two micronations that are recognized by the UN and they have treaties and they're part of important stuff that people take care. One of them has land, which is the Vatican. We are not going to be the Vatican. We are not old enough, nor rich enough. Uh, we don't need a religion either. What? Ah. But there's another one that I, until a couple of months ago, I didn't know which, which one the only, somebody of you, Knows who is the other one? These guys. The LVTF, right? Okay. These guys are actually a nation recognized by the UN. They are part of the Olympic Committee. They, they are part of the International Post something. They, they, they are part of the Red Cross. They're basically a country and they don't have any territory. It's the only case that I could find. These guys have been around a thousand years. So we are 10 and counting, right? Yeah. But they say that you, you shouldn't play, plant, you plant the seeds of the trees that your, your kids are, are going to sit below, right? So let's, let's do that. Okay. Let's play. We are, gonna, we are not going to beat them on the, on the, on the, on the fashion design. But yeah. We are much boring. Look at this. So badass. But, but yeah, he's been around like a thousand years. Right, and the whole thing started. And they, why, why are they recognized? Because basically they were doctors, and the first crusades, first crusades, not the last crusade, the one with Indiana Jones, the, the, the first crusades, and they helped all the knights going to the to the Holy Land. So afterwards they said like, oh, these guys are cool. They, they they started in Malta, and then now they don't even have Malta. Malta is another thing, but they keep the name. So I think this, this precedent, this is a good precedent the, for us to be, if they can do it, we can do it as well. Let's be optimist. And this is another precedent that I think we could, how, how do we get to be the order of Malta? Let's take the Masons, not the Illuminati, but the Masons, right? They were around like uh, 300 years ago, 200 years ago. They were, by the moment, very advanced. They have many crazy ideas, right? Like. I don't know, people being equal and respecting each other's religions, for example. Uh, so in the moment they look like crazy, they organize themselves and they make something very intelligent, that is that they permeate and they got into every single place of power they could. They made a lot of revolutions and they end up with many of the democratic countries that we have now, which have a lot of failures, but 
they way way better than having kings and monarchies, in my opinion. So let's not stop there. Of course, let's be the mason of the new century or something. Uh, again, the bar is set pretty high for how cool they look, right? But we are doing we are doing well for our, for ourselves. That's our precedent to um, to get closer to be the new Malta. And this is a, a personal experience of mine. Yeah, I think I'm right. Uh, the Partido de la Red, it, was a, it, is, it means the net party, it was a political party in Buenos Aires in 2013. They ran for the, for the legislature of uh, the city of Buenos Aires. Uh, um, the thing working like that, like this, uh, kind of like if you make a Reddit clone, it was a forum, you have to not verify yourself, you need you didn't need a real identity, it's just like based on trust and relationships, so you get like karma points or some some kind. But everybody it was open, anybody could participate and in the platform you discuss, you can either discuss and vote up or down or no I don't care. On the proposals that came from other congressmen, for example, they put it on the platform and you can vote yes. I like this, I don't like this, and they have all the discussion below. But also you can propose new laws yourself as a user. And if enough users voted, this is a good idea, the party itself, they also, they even, you even voted for which, which ones were the candidates that you wanted for the list. They raised 4,000 signatures, so they got incorporated as an official party. And then they got like 200,000 votes. So it's not a small feat for a new, new, new party. And the, the, the thing is that the, their, their mascot was the Trojan horse because the elected, the elected congressman or the elected, it was a legislature, so the legislative had to vote in the same way that the platform decided the majority. So it wasn't, the whole idea was to bring like, as liquid as possible a democracy inside the current system. If eventually everybody agree or most people or more citizens start to think that this is a good way to bring more liquidity to the, to the democracy, eventually you will end up having way more of these candidates than the others. And just like that, eventually you change the system and you got no revolution, nobody cut anybody's head and it was all peaceful. It almost worked. For it to work, we need to solve this. Some people say it's been solved. <laughs> I don't know if it's here. Um, we have some examples. They tried to do the, the whole UBI thing in Argentina as well with Ethereum. You have to prove your identity by a Zoom call with a random peep, another a random person from all the internet that verify you. They use Kleros, which is a decentralized, also in Ethereum, like a dispute, a dispute resolution system. Usually they all fail, but we need to basically solve one citizen of the Monero country, one vote. There are some ways to achieve that, but we, since it's the Monero country, we need to also ensure that the votes are all private and the citizens are all private as well. So there is crypto poll. I haven't looked as much into that as well. You just supposedly re signatures to vote, but that we need. That, that unlocks a lot of the things. And another uh, criticism that, in this case, I don't think it's a big problem, is they ask all the time, okay, but we have the best money ever, it's so private, we are never gonna be able to, to have taxes in Monero country. And to that I say, what do you need taxes for? I mean, it's not. I know it's not that simple, but it's like, okay, Argentina works with half of the economy in the black market anyway, nobody pays taxes and kind of works kind, especially the kind part, right? but kind of works. So it's not impossible. It's not like you have a 100% solution where everybody pays taxes or not on one hand. On the other hand, I think taxes got a bad reputation because you are forced to pay taxes, but you're forced to pay taxes because the services are lousy. People are paying taxes all the time. They're called subscriptions. Netflix is a tax that you pay for someone to create content for you, basically. So. I'm hopeful. Again, I'm an optimist. I know it's not that easy, but I think that if you provide, if the Monero country is not forcing anybody to be a citizen, because nobody was born in the Monero country, we are need to be enticing to people. We can provide good services and people will want to pay for them.
So no taxes, right? And this is literally, I think that the model that we get there is basically to be the new Seychelles or the old Swiss of the new, the new century. Uh, we have the private money, we don't care. We can make, make it easier to, to create businesses. And it has happened once and once and again in the history of the war. You start with a little island that is close enough to where the ships went by, go by, so you can rob them, but it's far enough so it's not that easy to attack the island afterwards, so you get the island full of pirates, and then the pirates get a lot of money from the ships, and they make pirate banks in the island, and eventually the pirate banks get really wealthy, so that other like super serious not pirate banks try to make business with them, and eventually you get, I won't name names, but let's say there are many countries right now that are super serious that started like this. Right? So I think this model works. I think we can attract wealth to a Monero country because we are going to make it, we are going to be less friction and we're going to have a way better system because we create a new one. So, summing so up, these are some of the thoughts that I have in, for, uh, in this talk. And uh, to finish it up, I think, again, like I said at the beginning, we in the Monero community, many of us, just like to do stuff first because we want to know if we can pull it off. I mean, it's like, oh, I had this idea, maybe it works. So to me, we are all like, it's just like throwing pebbles on a pond. We do it because it's fun first. Then we do it because we want to see how far we can throw them, the sound, or how many times we can make a skip, right? And we are like, ah, look at us. Ah, I, I managed to build this wallet. This Monoluco wallet. I, we want us to make this decentralized voting system. We want to make ah, stuff all the time. So as long as we keep those three things in common, as long as we have like a strong um, opinion on how the world or like Monero country should look, I think we will keep throwing those pebbles on the lake, and eventually we'll make an island out of them, and we can move all all there. So that's the Monero country. Uh, thank you, and I want to thank especially everybody that that contribute to me being here because it was actually funded by the community and people that I, who, I don't know who they are. So really thank you to those who know who you are. Thank you.